Hello, I'm Channing from CJ Games, designer of the board game Galactic Era. Today I'm showing you a preview of my newest creation, Era of Atlantis, which is the thematic successor to Galactic Era. It plays in the same game universe, 12,000 years in the past. So here you see the Era of Atlantis game set up on my table for four players. Uh, a player tableau looks like this. Everybody has a secret society with a player color and a virya marker to uh, which determines the amount of virya they have. You can use virya to enhance your actions to make them stronger. Then we have the board here, which is a map of the world 12,000 years ago with the North and South Pole in different locations so that some continents are further north. So for example, Atlantis here, which is the continent of Antarctica, further north and free of ice. Australia, for example, is further south and under an ice sheet. Also, the sea levels are lower, so some areas are now land, which are currently sea. So this is like the area around Indonesia, which is one landmass, one subcontinent now, which is Lemuria. You also have a, a land bridge between North and South America called Beringia here. And you have five major nations. The first one here is Atlantis, which is uh, the continent of Antarctica. Then we have Brahmapura, the yellow player, the yellow nation, which is uh, India. And then we have Lemuria here, which is uh, now Indonesia. We have Hyperborea, which is where Siberia is now. It's further south, so it's also habitable. And finally, we have Atlan, which is the Amer area around Central America, Mexico. Each area has uh, a power value, uh, a control marker spot, which is used to place control markers. Then there is a property marker, uh, which determines the defense values of an area. Here it is for a minor nation. Each minor and major nation area also has these building spots here, which is where you place the buildings in the game. Buildings are used to enhance an area or give you special bonuses for certain things. In the game, there are six, these six different types of buildings you can use. Bases, factories, capitals, pyramids, temples of darkness, and temples of light. Uh, each major nation has at least two, two to four building spots, and the minor nations have one or two, and one has a three building spots. Also, some areas, when you're playing with less than five players, become marked as wilderness. That's what these markers are for. That means they're taken out of the game. You have units. Uh, these are the these are the warriors. This is the big one, the big general unit, which is worth five units. And you have the small units here. You have agents. These are agents with various values from zero to three. Here is the power value of an area. You can also cross oceans using this symbol, which costs three units, or you can cross a strait here, which is a, a narrows a sea narrows, which only costs one units. You also have wilderness areas. This one also has a has a has a lost relic icon. You use lost relics to unlock uh, temples of light. So not all temples of light are available at the start of the game. Uh, some of them need to be unlocked. This is the round track, which determines the length of the game. So when the round marker here meets uh, one of these other markers, the doom wave or the end marker. Uh, then the game ends. The game also can end when there are seven temples of light on the map. Um, over here you have the objective cards. So if you fulfill these objective cards, every player gets two objective cards. If you fulfill objective cards, then you get points for them. Then here are the major nations that you can control. You see the archons on them. Every player has two archons and you can do the actions if you control a nation. Then you can do the act. You can use the action spaces which are on the nation. You also have your personal three action spaces which you can use, and nobody else can use. Then there are also, are also special actions. So special actions are connected to some of the areas. So any areas with this kind of icon with the round protrusion here, this is the Vimanas, 
gets the special action. This is the Rimana special action tile. So if, for example, Atlantis would get this action, then they would place it next to uh, next to the major nation tile, and then the players could use that action like in normal space. The special actions are always uh, very effective, very powerful, uh, either a very powerful variant of a standard action or a complete action on its own. The box will also include a background story, which you can read. Yeah, and then there's also these bidding dials here. In the game, when there's combat, you secretly bid a value, and then you pay the varia for that, and the player decide with a higher total combat value, then wins a combat. You also have these tracks here for keeping track of the power of the major nations. So at the end of the game, you compare the two nations you control, and the lower one is then your score. You also get points uh, for other things, like for the objective cards uh, that you control, uh, but also for any leftover viria that you have, that's also worth points. And if you control the leading major nation, you also get points. So that's a brief overview of the game Arrow of Atlantis, which is coming out on Kickstarter on September 30th.